Can the new Japanese food that is rolling out at 7-Elevens across the nation actually take over? Let's talk about it. We are here to create the konbini, but I don't know if the project will be so easy. Mm. Let's run the clip. I heard that the US 7-Elevens are starting to carry Japanese snacks similar to the Japanese 7-Elevens, so I ran to my local one to see if they had any egg sandwiches. The first location sadly didn't have any, but I went to a second location and was able to find a bunch of their new updated egg sandwiches. I also had to grab myself an obligatory cherry slurpee on my way out. Japanese 7-Elevens are coming to the US apparently. They're bringing the onigiri, amazing selection of sandwiches, all the bento you could possibly need, and most importantly, the chicken. Man. Boom! Oh! Listen, man, they're starting with the egg salad sandwich, but the reviews on the milk bread version in America, Andrew, they're kind of mixed. Man, I'm not going to lie, $5.99 for an egg sandwich that doesn't have milk bread, if it's not actually milk bread, kind of tough, but I will say this, people are going to trust the Japanese quality. Now, David, we all are excited. Everybody who's Asian or has had Asian snacks is excited that 7-Eleven, the largest, most dominant convenience store in America, is going to start rolling out its Japanese products from Japan. Now, the question is, do you think it will work? And do you think young people will start flocking to the convenience stores at 7-Elevens to buy these Japanese products? They've got a chance. Well, long story short, guys, 7-Eleven uh, started in America. It got sold uh, by a large portion to the Japanese side. The Japanese side is buying back the American portion. So now, Andrew, 7-Elevens will be headquartered in Japan. Yeah. So I guess the question is, how big of a difference can these Japanese snacks make, can a higher, can it, can it like make the brand of 7-Eleven look even better, you know, more higher end? Because these are convenience stores. And in America, I'm not going to lie, like, I'm not saying all 7-Eleven locations, but a lot of them are, you know, not in the best areas. You're saying the locations don't have the best reputation. <laughs> yeah, anyway, the... guys, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, check out Smala Sauce on Amazon at smalasauce.com. Andrew, here is a photo of the American version of the egg salad sandwich. Okay. It, they didn't cut off the crust. Okay. And it looks like they're using some sort of like grainy bread, grainier version of milk bread. Yeah. Here is the $2 version from Japan. Right. So, okay, so, so this it's... is the first item that they're trying to do. So Hawaii, 7-Elevens already have a ton of the Japanese items because Hawaii has a lot of Japanese people and is way closer to Japan. Right, and you know, they used it as a test market. Now this egg salad sandwich, yes, it is made with milk bread technically, but uh, it doesn't look quite the same. It looks like a standard egg salad sandwich, which I do love eating. I love myself an egg salad. I make them at home sometimes, but yeah, this one doesn't look the same. So you're saying the transition already phase one, you're, you're already questioning it. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm rooting for 7-Eleven. I love their foods. I love Family Mart's food. When I was in Tokyo, I was ate, eating that too. We did a video. Interestingly but enough, Andrew, Family Mart lost millions of dollars trying to enter the U.S. market as Famina. Yeah, they, they shouldn't have called it Famima or Famima. They should have just called it Family Mart. Anyways. Um, the reason why 7-Eleven is doing this shift is because a lot of people are starting to buy electric vehicles. That means less people will go get gas. Gas was already low margin. That means they have to up the margin on food and they already have all the locations pre-existing. So how can they upgrade them to create more margin? They want their food sales to go from 25% to 33%, but at a higher margin with more higher quality, more expensive Japanese items from Japan. You mean they don't wanna just sell more cigarettes? Yeah, well, <laughs> cigarettes, it, that's going down, too, due to vaping. Right, right, right. So, so, so I do, guess, the, do the Japanese brands know what they're doing? I mean, I think they're making the right decision by importing food concepts that they know people like into 7-Elevens. Now, is it going to work at every 7-Eleven location? Absolutely not. There's going to be 7-Eleven locations, you know, particularly the ones that are not attached to gas stations. You're talking about rural Alabama. No, no. I'm just saying, I think the more suburban 7-Elevens in California or New York, you know, the ones that are not attached to gas stations, I think the food here is going to work better. Like on the West Coast, particularly where in the West Coast, they do eat a lot of Japanese influence or Hawaiian influence foods. Right, 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 right. Anyway, let's just get into our list, Andrew. Here are uh, 10 points. Point number one, Andrew. Why do 7 Eleven, basically, why are the American chains overseas considered so much higher class? Whether that's Pizza Hut in China, 7 Eleven all around Asia, why does America have the bad version? Right. And well, then Asia has an elevated version. I mean, largely it's because I think that all the stores, the convenience store culture is different. Obviously, there's less crime out there. And also, they're not all attached to gas stations. To be honest, any, like any having anything, Next to a gas station, like you, it can't be that nice. Right. 
well, well, they occupy a completely different cultural spacing. And interestingly enough, Andrew, some Japanese brands, when they enter the U.S. market, they go down, uh, down market, such as Yoshinoya. Yoshinoya, both in Japan and around Asia, is much nicer than Yoshinoya America. Hey, I still like Yoshinoya America, though. I still mess with it. It's not top quality, but I'll eat it. No, yeah, of course, of course. Point number two, Andrew, a lot of people do not trust their local 7-Eleven quality because of the reputation has developed over the past few decades. Okay, listen, if you're in Japan and the person who runs the 7-Eleven is Japanese and everybody's Japanese, of course the idea and the feeling is like, oh, it's just another Japanese company, everything I trust from Japanese people because their attention to detail and their they're commitment clean. to quality and they're clean, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, 7-Eleven's like, are in all different places in America, owned by all different people. So, of course, perception-wise, you're just not going to trust it. Well, here's the truth, Andrew. In my opinion, 7-Eleven food is not for the college-educated crowd in the U.S. I did some research. 34.2% of adults aged 25 and older born in the U.S. have a bachelor's degree or higher. That's for people already born in the U.S. So, I think... The idea of like Japanese onigiris or even like a teriyaki bowl that's high quality is going to more appeal to a college educated crowd. But the college educated crowd in the U.S. doesn't go to 7-Eleven. Right. And like I said, I think this rollout of Japanese food, even if they're bringing out teriyaki bowls or Japanese curry bowls or all this delicious like, you know, Asian, actual Asian food from from Japan, it's going to work on certain locations of 7-Elevens like the ones in the West Coast in the suburbs that are standalone, right. not connected to gas stations. By the way, they bought up huge commissaries in Texas, Hawaii, other places around America to create the food. So some of it will be imported directly from Japan. Some of them will just be Japanese items created for the American market right. in a large commissary. Number three, um, people are saying, yeah, but you won't get a polite person at the register. Yeah, I mean, dude. This is America we're talking about. I, I remember one time me and my friend were at 7-Eleven back in like middle school and the worker needed a smoke break so much because they were like addicted to who knows what. And uh, they just let us take whatever we wanted from the store because they wanted to go take a smoke break that bad. Not in Japan. Uh, number four, Andrew, Famima tried and failed in the LA market already. They opened a bunch of stores, lost a bunch of money and closed them all down. You know what's terrible about Famima? I remember there was one inside the mall at... I was working at the mall. I was working selling shoes at the mall and there was a Famima open and it was just the worst convenience store ever. I was like, dude, this thing could have been way smaller and it could have been compact and the quality could have been better. And you should have just called it Family Mart because I like Family Mart. I don't know what Famima was. Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, 7-Eleven has a better chance though because people already know that brand right. name. Nobody wants to go to right. Famima. And, and again, guys, going back to the TikTok of the, of the guy talking about the chicken steak, I don't think they're going to have the chicken skewer at a lot of 7-Elevens rolling out in America. I think that's going to be one of the later items. What do you think it's going to be? It, like, just off the top of your head, no, like, what I, do you think they're bringing over from I Japan? think packaged foods. I think the onigiris. I think the, the, the egg sa sandwiches, yes. I think sandwiches is going to work more in America. Mm. I don't think the packaged... Uh, salad, chicken, and stuff, they're not going to send that over to Ooh, America. What about Japanese Uncrustables? Or I'm going to say this, that it potentially if they do an onigiri, they might need to do like Philly cheesesteak style or something, some type of hyperfusion flavor. Mm, Point okay. number five, Andrew, a lot of people are saying that it's not going to work because obviously in Japan, it's a walking co culture. There's 7-Elevens everywhere around the block. Here you have to drive to one and they're attached to gas stations. The urban sprawl, suburban sprawl split is just completely different. Right. The way you live life over there is completely different. Yes. Yeah, you yes. walk everywhere in Asia. It's a very dense. Point number six, Andrew, some people are saying that um, it's actually America's freedom that they give the companies that is leading to all the low quality products in America because America does not really restrict things like other countries such as Canada or Japan where to pass uh, the, their version of the FDA, they have super high thresholds. Mm, so, you know, like you, they're saying that America, American companies are able to put out lower quality products because uh, the, the restrictions are not as hard. Well, I was just in Canada, and you know what they were telling me? They can't get a lot of products in Canada for two reasons. One, you have to have French on the packaging in Canada. And number two, there's a ton of food restrictions on additives and preservatives that are illegal in Canada. So a lot of stuff that's in America can't even get imported over there. Right. Uh, point number seven, 
Somebody was saying, you know, in Japan, the kombinis or these uh, 7-Elevens, they're good and cheap. But for example, even in Europe, they have much higher quality food, but it's considered twice the price of the supermarket. So even in Denmark, Andrew, people think 7-Elevens have decent food, but it's too expensive. Oh, so they're saying that in 7-Elevens, the food in Denmark at the 7-Elevens are overpriced and they're too expensive. Yeah, people it looks like a bakery. The supermarket. Yeah, it looks like a bakery here, like a like a nice bakery. Wow. Yeah, I don't know what the prices are like in Denmark. I've never been there, but a lot of people so are saying I'm, obviously 7-Elevens have different branding in different countries. In America, it's kind of cheap, low end. In Japan, it's pretty middle, like a good solid convenience store. And then maybe in Denmark it's considered even higher. In Thai, Taiwan, Andrew, it's like the center of your life. You pay your rent at 7-Eleven. Oh yeah. Dude, Taiwanese 7-Elevens, I remember eating there right off the plane. Dude, those good. are super all-encompassing in terms of like what you can do there and what you can, how you can improve your life at a 7-Eleven. Uh, number eight, somebody said, like I said in the end, I don't think it's going to fully work just on based on how society works in the States, but the effort is appreciated. Somebody said, this is going to fail because of executive arrogance. Basically, it's just not part of American culture to embrace expensive Japanese food at a 7-Eleven. It is going to be weird, guys. I really think that they cannot roll out sushi. Do not roll out the sushi. People are not going to buy it, okay? People are barely buying sushi at the grocery store at right, a Ralph's. Cause right, because there are some very seedy characters sometimes hanging out at, let's just say, 30 to 60% of 7-Elevens. Are you going to buy sushi outside of the place where maybe people are, like, defecating? <laughs> Possibly. Like I said, certain locations are going to do really well, and I think certain locations are going to find out that maybe the, the, the egg salad sandwich I, is not going to sell. I think that these new combini versions of 7-Eleven are going to work wherever there is high-end boba chains. Not even low-end boba chains. They, hey, yeah. listen, this is free advice for you guys in Tokyo right now. Go to where there's high-end boba chains and open up the Japanese 7-Elevens next to those plots. Um, you know, somebody was saying, number nine, how can 7-Elevens become this like new, more profitable hub if you can just buy food there, but you can buy food online, you can buy food at the supermarket, you can go to a Mitsua, H Mart, a 99 Ranch, and just get all the Japanese food anyway, because Japanese food kind of became so ubiquitous that you can almost get like chicken teriyaki at Korean and Chinese supermarkets too. Yeah, I think in response to this, it's just gonna matter how good it is. If it starts to look like these dried chicken skewers that are rolling around, you know, just like you imagine those little hot dogs roll around. Or the taquitos. That are kind of, yeah, the taquitos. And those are kind of like, you know, I used to eat them when I was a kid. But, you know, obviously in my adult life, I stayed away from that stuff. But I'm saying, like, if it starts to look like that and it doesn't feel clean, people will not buy it. Yo, they might need to invent special new like america safe versions of like the storage units for the hot right. food now here's the thing david my takeaway is this i i think that uh i actually think that certain 7-eleven owners are gonna want the asian food thinking that it could might change the demographic of their store so if they don't think that you know maybe the store has all these cheap American products like nachos and stuff and these things that are attracting um, uh, a crowd that they don't prefer, then, then by having the Japanese snacks, it will, it, will, it will attract people who like Asian products, possibly a crowd that they more prefer. Also, I think those products will get stolen less. Yeah, because they're not point. like the chips and stuff, which, you know, people want to steal. Right, right, right. I was thinking of this, that, you know, it's hard for a brand that's low end to go high end. It's easier for a brand like Chobani that's considered high end to go low end. And I just think that they should rebrand these new ones that are Japanese kombinis as Nana 11. And Nana is Japanese for 11. Mm. So I'm saying, why can't they just call it Nana 11? To indicate that it's one of the ones that's like been converted to the kombini Tokyo style. Oh. Because I just don't, like you said, I just don't know. I'm kind of skeptical about a whole national rollout, but I applaud the effort. Yeah, or at least like maybe change the signage or something. Like the logo is like, you know how there's Starbucks Reserve? 7-Eleven Elevated. Ooh. What if it's seven twelve? You know, it's just a little bit better than 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven Platinum. Seven fifteen. Ultimately, uh, I would say I'm happy to see it. You know, like we said, obviously 7-Eleven now, now wholly owned by the Japanese conglomerate uh, holding company. So we'll see what kind of decisions they make. I Hopefully they learn from the past and they make some adjustments. I do know this though. Sometimes, Andrew, Asian companies, they, they, they kind of like, 
the Japanese, they might think like, we have the best quality, so the quality in the end will win. That's their, their thought process, but it might not work. I feel like sometimes Koreans are like, you know, like our stuff is like almost as good as Japanese stuff, but it's way cheaper. And then like Chinese people are like, yeah, you cannot beat us on the price. We're going to give you like all, all, everything for like $5. So I just feel like those are the three different mentalities that are like motivating people. But the translation to America it's just really complex and there's a lot of layers to analyze guys let us know do you think the 7-eleven uh conversion to the japanese style will work in america what are your suggestions if you are speaking to the 7-eleven execs yourself until next time we the hot pot boys we out peace, peace.